Hey guys, and welcome back to Mary J's Hauls. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about the findings that I came across with my integrative health doctor and things that could have been leading to my hives. So you guys have a, a plan and action and seeing either an integrative health doctor, but if you guys do wanna use insurance, you guys can take the things that I came back positive with and find your specific doctors that take your insurance and you can ask them about some of these things because so far my hives are pretty much gone and I do have have several things present in my body that I found with my integrative health doctor who I love because rather than just attacking the disease they try and heal the whole person so when you go to an integrative health doctor and you tell them about your symptoms and stuff and you tell them everything that's wrong with you not just the one hives or gastro or whatever chronic illness you have tell them everything because then they do fecal tests for different things they do breath tests they do urine tests blood tests so you kind of get like a full mock-up on the body and you get to see what is wrong with you so this this is what came back positive for me and what I suffer with is autoimmune disorders, ga chronic gastro issues, and chronic idiopathic urticaria. So I came back positive for SIBO, so that is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So guys, if you have hives, that is definitely one thing to write down to get checked with your doctor about because that could be causing your hives. And I said from the start that it could, it's probably a bacterial overgrowth. Now, unfortunately, the FMTs were not gonna prevent SIBO or help SIBO because if you do an FMT with an enema at home, the farthest it goes is your large intestine. SIBO is a small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So you really do need antibiotics. Now you can try a natural antibiotic like grapefruit seed extract. Unfortunately, my levels were so high that I did just finish two weeks of two different antibiotics that are specifically used to treat SIBO. Neomycin and what was the other one? Oh my god, I remembered it, but Neomycin and Zafaxin. Yes, Neomycin and Zafaxin, guys. I was taking those two in combination with each other. Now, another thing that came back positive before I get more into SIBO is um, I had three different types of mold strains growing in my body. So once I finished my SIBO plan, I, which I just did, I am about to start my mold treatment, hoping that that helps. Another thing that happened was that I came back super vitamin D deficient. So, it, guys, it never hurts in general just to take some vitamin D, especially if you're not getting very much sun exposure. Go ahead and take the vitamin D. It cannot hurt you for anything. But if you wanted to get your vitamin D levels checked, which I do not think was related to my hives um, or my chronic gastro issues, but it did cause other issues such as just a loss of color in my skin. I started losing a lot of hair and I'll talk about a natural remedy for that that's actually been working for me because I saw a couple of hair experts because I was very scared about losing my hair. As you guys can see, it's not bad, but it was just I was losing it at such an accelerated rate and I didn't know what was going on and I was so scared that I wasn't going to get it back ever. So I started researching a bunch of things and I actually found a little concoction that I actually make myself now and my shedding has gone down almost like more than half of what I was shedding in the shower prior. I'm not shedding it as much anymore. So for me, that's like a really good sign and I'm really hoping to start seeing new baby hairs growing out even though it's going to make me look like... Psh, I don't care. I'll take it. I'll take it. Totally. Okay, so another thing that I came back for, aside from SIBO and the mold toxicity, was I have a yeast overgrowth, which guys, once again, I said that that could totally be related to hives. So candida overgrowth or a yeast overgrowth. Now there's multiple different strains of yeast. There's also different strains of SIBO too, and I'll go back to that because I totally forgot to mention that. Um, but so after I finish... I finish my SIBO, then I go into my mold toxicity treatment, and then I go into my um, yeast overgrowth or candida overgrowth, um, and then I start to deal with my hormone imbalances, which any single one of those could be causing hives. They all have the potential to cough cause hives because it's all a system of the gut and it all functions from each other and you know yeast feeds on bad bacteria if you, and when I was taking my probiotic earlier it could have been feeding the bad bacteria as well as the good bacteria in my gut which could have been causing the bad bacteria to overtake so I do have to say um so far I have not seen hives and instantly within the first time before my test results even came back my integrative health doctor she gave me three things and these three things instantly reduce my hives 
Two of them are natural. Crazy, right? Crazy. One is glutathione. Glutathione is known to bind to toxins and heavy metals and you release them through your feces or your urine. Two is PEA. I cannot pronounce the full word, but when you look up PEA, you'll find it. That is a mast cell deactivator and um, a cleansing system as well. It helps cleanse your liver, it helps promote your liver. Um, and then the third thing I was taking, which is a prescription medication, it's the only one that you cannot buy over the counter, it is called c -Ketophen. Um, And that is also a mast cell deactivator or stabilizer. And so it is crazy to me that I went to so many doctors, did so much research, and I had heard of mast cell activation, but I didn't look into it far enough. So that alone could have been causing my hives. Mast cell activation is when your body starts to release too much, specifically histamine. But mast cell activation or mast cell syndrome also can create gastro issues as well as skin issues, rashes. So, I mean infinitely my highs got infinitely better and I don't even show anymore I'm lowering down on my prednisone because unfortunately my liver levels did come back kind of high um when and I've been on the prednisone now for about a year and a half so that's really not good now I don't think I need the prednisone anymore for my hives really at all the only reason I'm still on the prednisone is because I was on it for so long that my adrenal glands are really having trouble building back up the cortisol so um I'm still on it, unfortunately, but that is one of the last things that we will be treating as I did do a endocrinology test with my integrative health doctor. So rather than me having to go to 16 different doctors to find all of this out, I went to one doctor and paid for one session to find all of these out. Now you do have to pay for the test out of pocket too. But again, like I said, if you do not want to go the integrative health pay out of pocket thing, check these things with your doctors whether you're gastro, whatever it relates to, go and check these things with your insurance. So if you have chronic hives, gastro issues, check for SIBO and demand your doctor check for SIBO. Don't ask because they won't do it. I've done it before and none of my doctors would do it. Check for mold toxicity. You can buy those kits yourself. They're like $200. They do it on urine. I got mine. Um, I'll put a link below to the specific test that my integrative health doctor used because it's actually really amazing how they show you the breakdown of things. And I will do individual videos on each of these. And then, sorry guys, I keep swallowing really hard. I think I have um, a throat infection or something, maybe a sinus infection. I know, lovely, amongst all these other problems that I have. But um, working through it, I'm feeling better almost day to day, not with the throat thing, but everything else in my body is really starting to pick back up. So that's really good. Now I had a really difficult time on the SIBO medications, but once I found out why I was having such a difficult time, it made it way more tolerable. So those two antibiotics in particular are known to kill SIBO and only affect the bacteria in your intestines. Now I was getting so nauseous I could barely sit up and I was like, this medication, I can't do this. I can't take these medications anymore. But what I read is there's something called like Hertz syndrome, which is a, an, a side effect of these specific medications. And what it happens is once the bad bacteria starts dying off inside the body, the bad bacteria tries to fight back by releasing toxins. And those toxins really make you sick. Most people, when I first got my SIBO medications, I was like, Ooh! I'm so excited to feel better, like pop them in. Like even though I'm anti-antibiotics, my levels were way too high just to go the natural route. I tried it first though. I did try my grapefruit seed extract and I'm sure you can see that in one of my other videos. It's a great anti-natural uh, antibiotic. And um, oregano extract, edible oregano extract, not oregano essential oil. Do not consume oregano essential oil, please. Um, which has a lot of antimicrobial and antifungal properties as well. So I was doing a combination of those things as well as coconut oil, and I did see some relief, but I, I definitely knew everything wasn't where it needed to be still. So I was realizing that it's actually the bad bacteria that you're trying to die off that's releasing those toxins that are making you incredibly sick. But once I stopped the medications, things pretty much cleared up. I'm not nauseous anymore. I don't really have very many issues. Um, and I haven't noticed my hives. So I would say the first place to start, and I'm sorry this is so disorganized, but I'm just going ahead and talking here. Sorry, I just hit the microphone too. First place to start, mast cell deactivators. Instantly go online, 
buy glutathione i will put a link below and buy pea i will put a link below guys i cannot put a link below for c ketophen but talk to your general practitioner because I don't know who deals in mast cell activation. It seems like no doctors do, except for integrative health, but ask for C-ketophen. There's not many, many side effects as I've done my research, because I always do my research now with big pharma products. Um, and the other two products have no side effects as well. Um, and then the second thing to look for is SIBO. Go to your gastro and ask to get a SIBO test. And if they say no, you can buy one online and do it yourself. Three, three, <laughs> um, is the mold toxicity. Now, again, you can buy that yourself. You can buy it through a mold company. You can probably ask your general practitioner. Although when I told my general practitioner the things that I was on that are over the counter and natural like glutathione, which your body naturally produces to help remove toxins and help your liver function, she had no idea what it was. And she works at Sibley. No, sorry, not Sibley. Johns Hopkins. She's a Johns Hopkins doctor. So, I mean, I know we put a lot of tout on the Johns Hopkins doctors, but they don't know everything, you know? So, um, and Johns Hopkins got rid of their integrative health center, which is very unfortunate because I had just gotten a referral there and I guess it was healing too many people that they must have had to shut it down. So second thing, I mean, sorry, third thing, mold toxicity, fourth thing, yeast and candida overgrowth, but the mold toxicity and the candida overgrowth can totally be interchangeable because I do think that the yeast has more of an effect on hives than the, um, the mold toxicity. And then the fourth thing is you're gonna need to get your adrenal glands checked with an endocrinology test, and that will be through, um, I believe urine, um, but it will show your hormone levels, how your hormones are being used, your cortisol levels, and the function of your adrenal gland, which is highly important. It's how we produce our flight or fight response. So when your body encounters too many stressors and you don't have enough cortisol, your body kind of shuts down and you can go into shock. So it is highly important that you have ad adequate cortisol levels going through the body and that they're being absorbed in the proper ways. So guys, I will leave a link below. I will do more videos talking about each of these individually and how I'm treating them with what medications and what they actually mean. Um, so far, I am on a path to recovery. I cannot believe it's taken me this long to find such simple answers that I'd been begging my doctors for. I begged them to check these tests and none of them did. So I'm sorry if my faith and lack of trust in the general medical system is, it, it's gone. I mean, my, my face in general with the traditional American medical system is, mm -mm, it's not there anymore. I, I've learned way more about my own body than any of my doctors have. You're the only person that can know what your body is feeling and what your body is doing. And some doctors just tend to write it off with whatever they've read in a book. So if you want real answers and real results, I will leave a list of the tests that I've done below, the exact company and their cost. Um, and you guys can pick and choose which test you decide to do. I highly recommend if it is for chronic hives or gastro issues, start with the SIBO and the yeast tests. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you guys for making sure I am progressing through my journey of chronic illness. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope you guys find some relief too.